Aloha, I'm Phyllis Bleas, president of the American Creativity Association, which is bringing you the live show for today called The Creative Life. Our guest today is Virginia Sullivan, and the topic is Discovering Your Creative Center. With me is my co-host and the chairperson of the American Creativity Association, Darlene Boyd, and Darlene knows who will be introducing Virginia. Darlene, hi. Hi, aloha, Phyllis, and aloha, Virginia. Welcome to The Creative Life. It's my pleasure this afternoon to introduce to you Virginia Sullivan. Virginia Sullivan has been a career management consultant for several years. And in that role, she works with people, helping them to go through the process of uncovering and discovering the creative source within oneself. Uh, we're going to do something a little bit different today. We are going to take our viewers and ourselves to the mount, to the top of the mount, metaphorically, that is. So at this point, uh, I'm going to introduce you to Virginia, and Virginia will uh, help us with Phyllis's uh, assistance to get moving on. Um, basically, she's going to serve as our Sherpa throughout the, the next few minutes that we have. And Phyllis, to you. Okay, Sherpa. Well, I'm very curious uh, where you're going to take us today and why. Today we'll we'll uh, we'll start the mountain uh, to get uh, go up the mountain to our center of creativity, um, which is in each one of us. But oftentimes it's a process to access access it so that it can play a role in your life. Um, we're going to start today at, at base camp, and then we're going to up climbing the mountain, uh, the ten thousand foot, the twenty thousand feet, and then the peak. The climb down and then uh, landing. So that's where we're going today. Okay. Okay. So with the end of this half hour, we hope that we will reach our creative center. That's the goal. Absolutely. All right. Well, I know you have several walks of life, Virginia, and you do take people for years. You've taken them into their creative center in order to find their calling in life, their work, their avocation, their vocation. And I'm wondering what what happens at base camp or when you take someone there? What do you do to prepare them if you're starting with their creative impulses? That's what we really like to learn about. Okay. Well, I mean, uh, just a little background. Um, initially, you know, something usually happens in someone's life um, uh, to kind of ignite process. And um and uh, usually there's a dissatisfaction in life. And, you know, we often call it the new basis. So with that, here's the process we go through. Um, in the base camp, uh, the base camp is about preparation. It's about getting ready to go up to the mountain. It's about discarding things that aren't essential um, to get up the mountain, um, to make it as easy to get up there as possible. Um, in the, the work that I do with clients, we talk about uh, coming up with kind of a, uh, an ideal plan as far as um, once, you, once you access your center of creativity, then, you know, how, how is that going to influence the rest of your life? So we want to clear out everything that's going to um, keep us from locating that center of creativity. So oftentimes that, you know, one of the things I suggest is to brainstorm with yourself, meditation, journaling, journaling, um, to really get in touch with, with your center. You know, what are the things that I love to do? You know, what what would what would my life look like if I could have an ideal life? And um, so journaling assists with that. I um, a big part of journaling is the uh, what I call the, um, the the stream of consciousness writing, just writing whatever comes up, uh, no judgment, just, um, you know, see what, just asking yourself, continually asking the, the question, what, what would my life look like if I loved what I was doing? I loved, you know, where I was, all of the different aspects. Meditation is very effective with that as well, um, because again, it forces us to kind of 
clear out the, all the uh, the sounds around us and the distractions around us so that we can really, again, focus because we want to go into our stuff. So um, other things to get rid of the the, uh, uh, the path and not to be weighing us down as we go up the mountain. Um, just agree. Anytime we suffer a loss in life, whether it's the death of someone, whether it's loss of a job, whether it's, um, you know, loss of a, of a, uh, uh, a relationship of any kind, there's a, you have to go through the five stages of grieving. And, um, and uh, I see so many clients who haven't done that and they get stuck in one of, uh, one of the stages. And the different stages of, of, uh, of uh, grieving are number one, the, the denial, the shock, you know, um, something's happened and, it's like, wow, you know, I I uh, uh, I can't believe this has happened. Um, I had a client one time come in to me, and he had been um, with uh, with this company for 31 years. He was um, never had an issue ever. This came from um, you know out of the blue that he got laid off, and he he was in my office a year, you know, and it was that shock, it was that denial, you know, and so um, then we move into anger. We get very angry about, it, you know, and um, uh, and underneath that anger is hurt, uh, you know, because it it uh, there's a lot of pain associated with that, and so we react angrily. Then we go into the bargaining stage. Well, what if I what if I did something different, you know, kind of maybe maybe I can bring it back or whatever, you know, and uh, then then after that, and these all, by the way, aren't nice and tidy. You're kind of going in and out of them, um, uh, you know, different different levels. Then we go into depression um, and then acceptance, you know. And acceptance doesn't mean you like it, but it means that you accept it. So all of this, we like to get that all cleared out before we start the climb to find our creative center. Virginia, while we're still in base camp, may I ask you, uh, you mentioned journaling and meditation is there yeah. are there different forms you would, you also had mentioned stream of consciousness as one form of journaling are you able to suggest some other forms for us or that are more maybe more effective one or the other well i think it, it depends on the person you know what's going to be the most effective for the person as far as meditation you know any type of meditation works that you know where you get rid of the distraction get quiet kind of go with it but as far as writing, you know, some stream of consciousness works for some people. Others uh, who tend to be very organized, you know, will, will um, uh, you know, be, be very precise. And, you know, it works better for them if they make lists of those things that they love to do, you know. So it's going to kind of depend on what works for you. What's the most effective way for you to, um, you know, get through, uh, get through the, 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 um, the the distractions and get into a place where you've got a good idea that um, you know this this is what I this is what I love to do yeah this is where I would like to be this is what I would like my life to look to look like I As, equate it to to falling in love you know when you uh, hit your create, creative center you know it's like oh yeah you know I mean and I see it with my big smiles on their faces, lots of energy around it, you know, when you're in love, you're like, when I tell the world, you know, you, you can't wait to get up and out, you know, and so it's that same kind of energy, excitement, you know, yes, this is what I was looking for, you know, and, and uh, you can just see it on people's faces, yeah. How um, difficult is it for you as a coach or as the leader, uh, if that person, if your client walks and really does not take your suggestion, really says, no, I don't want to write anything, I'm not a meditator, how do you approach that? Well, I mean, number one, they've got to want it, you know, they've got to, they've got to want to make the changes in order to make their life better, you know, and because I can't force them to do that. And so, um, uh, you know, we, get, we talk about it. I mean, oftentimes people get blocked um, because of the fear. You know, it's fear of the unknown, and life has been pretty comfortable, and uh, that's a huge block, that fear, and they're afraid to kind of move on. We that we talk about, you know, um, if they if they're obstinate and they flat just don't want to do it, period, 
well, then um, there's not a lot you can do in that situation. But in, in situations where the fear is blocking them, you know, people have shame about what happened. People, you know, mm. have a myriad of emotions going on around it. And so my job is to help them process that. Do you see a fear of failure in the, in the clients? I, uh, I'm sorry, say that again? Do you see a fear of failure when you fear mentioned it? Oh, 100%. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Of fear of failure, fear of the unknown. Uh, you know, um, uh, I'm not sure I can do it. You know, kind of don't want fear of success. You know, don't want to necessarily go. No, so yeah, there's a lot of that's the biggest is the fear. But oftentimes, um, you know, people are embarrassed with where they are. If there's a lot of shame attached, especially in a job law, a lot of shame. And uh, you know, and definitely the stages of of grieving, the anger, the you know, everything else. So so um my job uh as as their Sherpa is to help them through that process. All right, Ms. Sherpa. <laughs> Phyllis. <laughs> Well, a couple of things. Um, you're talking about the inward life that sets the intention for their outward life. Dirty. And I and I know you've been dealing with a lot of people this year going through COVID, which are circumstances beyond their control. Yes. So no doubt they're having to navigate the grief that's happening through their personal circumstances in the context of the larger one. And I, I don't know if you want to speak more to grief and the five stages of grief, because I think we've got that. But I do wonder about what do you do every day? You know, what do you, what do, you do to get started now? You're ready to go. You've got the grief behind you. What's your next stage up the mountain? Ready to go up the mountain. So the second stage is um, to up start the climb, you know, one foot in front of the other. Now, hopefully you have your list of what, you know, what the, what the components of what your, you would like your life to be. You've got that. You've meditated about that. So now the big job is going to be, uh, is going to be number one, visualizing it every single day. Um, because, um, you know, uh, that really sets in. Um, I have two examples of that quick examples. One of which is, I have outside at my front door, I have a little ceramic dog that somebody gave me. It was years ago they gave it to me, and I've got it outside at my front door. And um, uh, about eight or nine years ago, um, I, I got another dog. I was given a dog because somebody couldn't keep it, okay? So shortly after I got the dog, I'm coming in the door one day, and I look down at that, that dog, the ceramic dog. It looks like just like the dog I've got. So you know, it's like an unconscious visualization. And I have a friend who same thing happened with it, with her cat that her her grandson uh, drew a picture of a cat. And then several years later, and she had done a refrigerator, several years later, her cat looks like that. So, you know, uh, visualization is very strong, is a very strong uh, sub process. So I, um, I suggest that People do that every way, every day. Look at the list, kind of um, uh, just see what that's going to look like in their lives. And then, you know, the biggest the biggest thing is just put one front, uh, one foot in front of the other. Just start the climb. I I I think I've heard that you know elite athletes visualize they're executing their their task perfectly, exactly. and right. then and then they step in, then they can imagine stepping into that role. So let's say I've done this and I'm ready to get, what takes me to the 10,000 foot level? Well, the 10,000 10, foot level, um, you know, this, this is an assessment. Okay. How am I doing? And um, there's a lot of fear uh, there, a lot of emotions. Um, I tell people the, the biggest, uh, the biggest issue that we have when we're going through that process is between our ears because our heads are, and everybody's head is the same way are talking to us, um, the ego doesn't want us to succeed that, you know, and so we've got a lot of fear, we've got, we don't want to go there. And this is where the fear surfaces again. Um, and that's a powerful, powerful emotion. You know, all of us are more comfortable maintaining the status quo, you know, and so um, this requires a lot of courage, you know, to, to get up and do it. And, um, uh, you know, and, and and you just have to put one foot in front of the other and do it. You know, 
Um, this is where a lot of self-talk comes in because you're going to have tremendous negative self-talk going on. Then um, you got to counter that. You got to counter that with the positive self-talk as well. You know what you remind me of, um, it, it, myself very much included, is I think a lot of us think that we're not cr the creative type. You know, it, the, why would I join the American Creativity Association? Other people, and they often associate that with the creative arts. You know, the arts and crafts, yeah. and that is one wonderful section of the American Creativity Association. Mm -hmm. But also being creative in your walk of life. And the, what you're, you've taken us through so far, getting to the 10,000 foot level through visualization and stages of grief, sounds like something anyone can do to, you know, on this journey to, to accessing our creative center, you're giving us what sound like very practical tools it's, it, that are affirming to me that I'll just take it one step at a time. Exactly. Exactly. Which is, which is how we need to do anything, right? Anything new. Just, just start moving forward, you know? And this is one where you're going to take two steps up, one step back, three steps up, two steps back, you know? So it's not necessarily a very clean one, one step in front of the other clean process because, again, there's a lot of resistance. Yeah. And but then anybody and, can do it. Absolutely, anybody can do it. Well, right. It sounds like the like when Einstein and others in the lab have a mistake and it, something breaks because they've been doing it every day. We're told that they understand what that break or what that false result actually is added to their body of knowledge. There you go. So, and you say do it every single day, whatever our visualization is, it will have its own dialogue with our inner expressive self. Completely. And this again, this is not. Nuclear science. This exactly. Is, uh, exactly. I've never quite understood creativity in that way that you're expressing it today, that it's having a dialogue with yourself. Yeah, yeah. And you don't need to wait for it to hit you over the head. <laughs> and, and, you know, because we all have a creative center. And, you know, uh, some, is, uh, some uh, centers of creativity um, are harder to find than others. You know, um, I find that people who are linear um, tend to have a little more trouble getting to this because they see everything linear. And this is more about the circular parts of our life, you know. And so, um, but everybody's got it, you know, and it can be obscured, you know, by many things. But if we if we go through the process, we can discover it. Um, you know, it's like somebody who's had a very linear job, uh, uh, you know, like a, like a, a CPA or, a, you know, um, a CFO or something like that. And then, you know, retires and takes up painting or something, you know, and finds that they're good at, it. Um, you know, that, that, that's something they never access before. Wow. What, well, what gets us to the next level, that 20,000 foot? Ether sphere. Okay. So the 20,000 foot level, again, is an assessment. You know, how am I doing? Um, and this is when the tug of war starts because, you know, you can see the peak, but, you know, you're, you're, you're still doubting yourself to a certain degree, but you're also, well, maybe I can do it. You know, I mean, I could, I could see it. I've gone this far, you know, maybe I can do it. Um, and so, this is pivotal as far as, um, you know, we, we've got two choices here, either stop or go up. You know, there's no uh, go to the peak because now there are no more levels to kind of um, go through. So the, the goal is in sight. Now, do I want to actually put one foot in front of the other and, and try to get there? Yeah. So I'm thinking as we're talking about uh, reaching the, the peak and having that goal, for so many of us, and I suspect when you're working as a coach for your clients, we we manage to have the confidence and we're almost to that peak. And then we're playing with the metaphor today, of course, of, of the peak. And chances are the peak has a little ice on it. So we slip and fall. So how do you how do you communicate that confidence to your client 
to give them that boost to say it's all right. It's all right that you're be, you've done a great job thus far. You can do it again. Exactly. Well, and a big part of my job is more people is to be a cheerleader. You know, is to um, just help people um, be aware that you know this is available to them. And flipping is part of the process. You know, it's that you know three steps up, two steps back. You know, and um, uh, I, I said in the very beginning, this isn't necessarily a pretty process, you know, and it's not precise. Um, flipping and falling, you know, we oftentimes learn more from our falls in life than we do if life just clicks along. And so, um, uh, yeah, that's that's how I, I, I help them through that process. Yeah. Just to con- continue with our little metaphor of the day that we're playing with. Do you think in the creative process that that one is more creative with the support of others that are taking on the same task? I mean, we're using base camp. We're using reaching the peak. And when there is a base, base camp, often we know that there are those times that are probably for safety better to do this process with others. And certainly if you're going to slip and fall, the others will be there for you. How, how do you coach someone perhaps that doesn't have that support team or they're on their own completely in isolation. What's what strategies do you bring forth for them? Well, one of the things that that I talk about initially is with the client is exactly about the support system. What kind of a support system do you have around you? Because in life, you've got to have some some support helping you through. Um, one of the things we do is identify, you know, because people don't necessarily have family around. People don't necessarily, you know. Uh, people who've worked for long periods of time, their support or their um, or their colleagues, you know. But in this type of a situation, the colleague is not going to be necessarily the best support. Can be, you know, can be helpful. But um, so we spend some time identifying support people uh, in their lives. And this is, you know, and they may not be any be anybody local. But one of the things um, is. You know, we 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 become like the people that we're around, right? And so, um, identifying um, you know people who are in who are doing what you want to do, uh, you know, and reaching out to them to be supportive. Um, I I always tell people steer clear of the negative ones, you know, um, uh, incorporate the the positive ones because um, there are always going to be negative people in the world, and you need the positive people who are who are going to be helping you through the process. So we all have some sort of support somewhere, somehow, if we just really take a look at every area of our lives. You know, we've got, um, what are we involved in? You know, what what kind of friends do we have? You know, are we involved in any organization? Can we join organizations of, of people who do what we want to do or whatever? So there's always a way to bring people like that into your life. Well, thank you. And now let's get to the peak. Can we? I want to see what that whole process feels like before we have to come down again. Okay. All right. So, so the peak, it's like, you know, again, it's like, um, I did it, you know, my gosh, I did it, you know, and disbelief and excitement, elation, you know, and this is kind of the falling in love part. Like, I found it, you know, and, and so, um, Again, there's just such a a, a shift in one's um, personality when they find it, but um, tremendous elation and excitement that they've tapped into it. Now, what do I what do I need to do to make this happen? Yeah, probably their health is by now starting to improve. Their sleep, yeah, yeah, their weight, yeah. oh, yeah. you know, a, 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 any. I'll call it addictive behavior. I don't want to be a downer and I'm not an analyst, but, you know, kind of just really focusing on this new creative uh, outlet in their life. And, and how do they, how do they, what is it, what do you do? You, you know, before enlightenment, enlightenment, chop wood and carry water. Now we're after enlightenment. Are we back to chop wood and carry water? Are you going to help us come down that mountain in our, Remaining four minutes. I want to make sure we get the full. Okay. All right. So we'll, we'll talk a little faster here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah. So now down the mountain, you know, what, what do we need to do to incorporate um, the, the, you know, this 
creative center into the life that we want to create, that we want to have. And, you know, which involves, uh, as I said, it's, um, you know, finding other people who are doing what we want to do, uh, assessing, like, do I need education? Do I need what additional training could I use if necessary? Um, the biggest thing is to try to be around people and situations that are are doing what you want to do or reflect what you want to do. Volunteering is a great idea. Organization, um, you know, um, any any way that you can incorporate this into your life by being around what you're looking for. So that's so interesting. So this entire journey that you've described, we haven't even begun the creative life that we're imagining for ourselves. So right. for those watching. This entire process up and down the mountain has been within us all along. Exactly. And it's when you get back down, that's when you volunteer or apprentice with somebody or quit your day job or whatever you do. Exactly. I love right. it that you're you're giving strategies and fleshing out this creative process that you you don't need any money for it. You don't yeah, really yeah. need anyone else. Yeah. You have it all within you. With and and I think your guideposts though are helpful and the road signs. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. That's that's really interesting. So where do we go next? Okay. Are we landed? Yeah. Now we now we now we land. You know, and so uh, we found our creative center, and we're doing those things that are necessary to you know make it happen for us. And I talk about initially when people are uh, unsatisfied, there's kind of that internal grumbling within it. It's like, blah, 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 you know, life isn't good kind of thing. And that all goes away. There's just a sense of calm, of peace, of enjoyment, of happiness, like we're on our way again. It's like we, people refer to it as a new lease on life, you know, kind of a, a, a an unsettling within it, you know, that, that, um, Again, something's just not right. Um, you know, things bother us. Um, you know, uh, just not comfortable, not happy. So, Virginia, what you bring to mind for me in a Hawaiian sense is we call this pauhana. At the end of the day, we're ready to rest. And that's really where you took us to. And so at this pauhana time, we can just enjoy the fact that we've taken this journey. And I really want to thank you very much for coming to us and others can look at your website, Virginia Sullivan, is it .com? As, uh, uh, actually, it's Power Connections. And, okay. Yeah. PowerConnections.com and our, our viewers can turn into actcreatively.org and find out more about your work there. And sure. Darlene Boyd, thank you very much for joining us in Irvine. And so from, a, from our family to yours, Mahalo and Aloha.